Pull over. Pull up. Pull over. Pull out. Pull over and sleep. All right, y'all. So I remember this one night back in freshman year of college that literally changed my life for the second time. And I do mean the second time because the first time is for another story. I remember it was me and my boy O chilling in our usual spot on the second floor of the campus main building called the Union. And we were waiting on a text from my homegirl named Lily so she can give us all the updates on all the parties going on that week. And like I made clear before in a previous video, Lily was the plug when it came to all the parties and events on campus. Campus. When we needed something, call Lily. Crazy side chick won't leave your house, call Lily. When there's something strange in your neighborhood, don't call Ghostbusters, call Lily. Anime spoilers, need that, call Lily. You better not call Lily for that or I'ma slap you so hard your grandchildren gon' feel it. We hit up Lily that night because instead of doing our usual routines, you know, playing Yu-Gi-Oh, roaming campus for exciting moments and getting high off of life. <laughs> We decided that we wanted to go to a club, like an actual club, you know, the ones you see all the rappers and the street pharmacists go to, but we didn't want it to be just me and O going, that'd be weird. We needed a third person going with us, and luckily, O knew exactly the person to call. One of our homies that we barely saw, we're gonna call him Andy, and he was more than happy to come with us because he hadn't been able to do fun things for some months because of work. Cool, buddy, all aboard the magic school bus. So later that night, we go pick up Andy, we hype on the ride there. I was explaining to Andy and O what not to do and what to do because this was their very first time and I was acting like a freaking club guru, which I was mentally. <laughs> But see, here's the problem. I knew what to do at clubs because I've went to a couple before at the start of my freshman year. So I felt like I was very educated in the club and partying field. However, even though I knew what to do whenever it was game time and that knowing what to do happened, things barely really ever went in my favor. Like I'm not built for the club life. Partying, maybe, but clubs? Absolutely not. So we eventually get there, we all get out and get in line. And I cannot make this up. Hands on the Bible. Like, this is what happened. I'm not joking. I saw the security and man's had a whole bulletproof vest and a whole assault rifle in his hand. Like, the second I saw it, I felt a little bit of regret. Cause bro really playing IRL Call of Duty right now. Like, are we signing up for the military or something? I felt like one of them classrooms in school, whenever the principal walks in and everybody gets quiet. <laughs> Who gonna cause a scene in that line? And get shot? Not me. After some time, we all eventually get inside, find a seat, and we make a game plan. All right, everybody. The game plan tonight is to have fun, but our ultimate goal is to get the women. So all we gotta do is follow your lead, right? Right. Bruh, I feel so out of place. Like, I'm the only Asian here, and this is a majority black club, so... Stop being a little hoe and grow some nuts. We arching backs tonight. At that point, you could already tell we were all nervous, so I decided to step up to the plate to show them how it's done. Worst decision. So I got up, went to the dance floor, they all followed along. Next thing I know, right in front of me, this girl starts bouncing that wagon right in front of me. Like, she was super close to me twerking. Cheeks all close to my waist and everything. It's like she was trying to throw it back to see if I would catch it. Like this was a mulatto music video or something. And the guys were watching, so I didn't want to be no, what did that she be saying? Puh. I couldn't be no puh in front of the boys, you know what I'm saying? But I was still low key kind of nervous because we were in an actual club. You know a lot of bad things that go down in actual clubs, if you know, you know. Which was also kind of weird because I've never had that problem with females until that moment because we were in an actual club. If you know, you know. So I had two choices. Sit there and watch, continue to get teased, literally centimeters away from my schlong, or answer the call. I answered the call. But bad decision. Because when I grabbed her waist, she looked back so quick and curved up freak out of me. She was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what are you doing? And went to go twerk on another guy right in front of me, then curved him too. I, in my head, I'm like, huh? Nani? Andy and O was in the back laughing at me and Andy was like, this is the guy we're following? <laughs> No, I'm finna go off and do my own thing. And O followed right behind him. And it left me like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. 
Popo and Kami. Calm down. Y'all niggas acting like I don't ever get curved. Like I'm a Mac Daddy or something. When it comes to the game of success, you win some, you lose some. And I've had way more success with women than both of you combined. Y'all ain't no better. You would have had the exact same thing happen to you. Did you not just see her curve the second dude right after me? Like, are you blind? So all the way up until I was ready to leave, I just roamed around looking for excitement. Cause that club was high key boring. Nobody was dancing for real people got high in the booth and just stared at the ceiling some of the girls got drunk and just twerked for three hours straight like shorty had them horse legs literally here's some actual footage from back then everything was going pretty cordial until the turning point of that night the decision that almost costed me everything around the time i was ready to leave which was like 1 a.m i go find owen andy and i'm like yo i'm getting a little tired this whole boring there ain't nothing happening i got just enough energy to take us all back home safely then this nigga o says listen man can we can we stay for like I don't know, another hour? I wanna get some numbers before I leave cause a nigga ain't taking no L's like you did. Bruh, I'm tired, let's go. I'm not a night person. I will literally fall asleep on the road. I just need more time. Listen, listen, you be all right. We can stop by the gas station on the way home. Just let me get some ass. <sighs> go man, whatever, just, just hurry up. After that, I sat there for three hours waiting until they were done having their fun. And what I really wanted to do three hours ago was give them an ultimatum. Either we go or y'all niggas getting left. Because like I said, I was trying to be more responsible because I knew I was a sleepy person, which is what I should have did three hours prior. <laughs> So much for being a too nice person, which I used to be a too nice person. It's okay to be nice, but don't be too nice for people take advantage of you. And you know what pissed me off more was that these niggas only got one number each. They wasted my time. Almost had me about to pull out one bullet each. It was like 4 a.m. when we left and we were all dog tired. So I was speeding to Andy's house, dropped him off. Next was O's house. And at this point, I'm so tired that it was hard to keep my eyes open while driving. That is dangerous. All I wanted to do was just go to my house and go to bed. That's all I was focused on. I didn't think about stopping on the side of the road and sleeping. I could hear something in the back of my mind saying, pull over. Pull up. Pull over. Pull out. Pull over and sleep. I thought I could fight the sleepiness, which was the worst decision I've ever made. Because as soon as I got to O's neighborhood and was literally down the street from his house, we both fell asleep at the exact same time and the exact same length of time. Two seconds. I hit somebody's mailbox. The mailbox tore completely off the ground and I didn't think that a mailbox could do so much damage, but that mailbox destroyed half of the front of my car. I'm not kidding. You would have thought the big body truck hit me the way it looked. Like I wish I still had the pictures. Don't be like me back then, y'all. Be more responsible. I knew I should have just went home when I had the energy, but I didn't. If you're so tired that you can barely drive and you're trying to get home, just pull over, take a nap. It might save your life and your car one day. And you know what's the worst part about this story? The same night I wrecked my car was the same day that I paid it off after two and a half years of payments. Two and a half years down the drain. Talk about a waste of time. Oh! I gotta keep a pop up with a red ribbon on me. Red ribbon on me. Fly away on the bus. Yeah. Headed up the commies. Headed up the I need me a bag full of sensu to get me back started. You don't even know how I've been through. The straight is hyperbolic.